Okay, chapter four, part two. Hopefully we can wrap it up here. So yeah, ethics. Let's look at this. Well, there's public and private information out there on the inf on the internet. Now, if it's private, it should be uns uncensored. But public information, it can be censored a lot. And, and in today's society, that is a big issue. We really need to ask, who gets to set the rules? Are social media giants too powerful? And I've got to say, yes. Seriously, never in the history of our country could private companies decide who gets to see what. I mean, there, there could be books, there could be newspapers, but it's, it's not really the, com the company's fault. I mean, seriously, Facebook and Google, which owns YouTube and Twitter, let's just assume if they were all very left-oriented or all very right-oriented or all, if, and I'm not saying it's the case, but if they all had the same objective, get everyone to think this or get everyone to think that, they absolutely can censor out um, a dissenting opinion. I've seen it happen left and right. Is it their fault? I don't know. Is it just because we let them? That's probably the case. But if you think about what's going on in the world the last few years, it's just I personally have a lot of problems with Facebook and some of the big companies, especially YouTube, saying, well, this stuff can be there and that stuff can't be there. I don't think it's fair. That's my own opinion. Anyway, so a lot of censorship happens in a lot of countries too. China, Burma, Singapore, North Korea, a lot of places. And United States is absolutely, if you say something that YouTube or Google don't agree with, it may not appear. And the count of viewership, let's say maybe really a million people view that video, but if somebody doesn't want you to think it's that popular, a number like 50,000 may appear. So please don't be so naive and think that doesn't happen in our country. It absolutely does happen. So let's say in general, you wanted to use something like Net Nanny, and you say, hmm, I only want Junior, your little, your son or daughter who happens to be, or your, your child, your offspring, whatever your birthing output, whatever you want to call it today, uh, <laughs> is six years old and you don't want them to see things that maybe they shouldn't see. So Net Nanny, maybe you only allow them to go to Disney or, you know, sites that you have approved. So there's a bunch of thing, tools that parents can use or elders can use to guide what others can have access to. So think about this question, and I really wish we were face-to-face. -face. Should everyone in the world have access to everything on the internet? I would definitely pause the class here right now and ask for your opinion. You know, we think many times in America that we have all the right answers, but some countries are very offended by what we do. We just seem to take for granted that people can go out and see pornography or violent videos or horror movies or whatever. And not all cultures believe this. So as we just saw recently in Afghanistan, you know, we don't all in the world believe the same things. It's just not, it's just not. And again, I lived in Africa for three years as an adult in West Africa. Life is different all over the world. We all have the majority of things in common, but Back to the topic, censorship is absolutely all over the world a serious issue. And intellectual property, I mean, all over the world, people steal things too. So just because you put it on the internet, you have to be careful. Do you have copyrights and trademarks? And, and, and trade secrets are a big issue. I mean, literally one of the biggest nutritional companies in happens to be in Mexico. It came about by uh, an American company wanted to market in Mexico, but before it was allowed, they had to put um, their ingredients out. And while that happened, somebody quickly got a copy of that, of the ingredients and made a competitive product. Could that happen in country X? So Pepsi Cola, Coca Cola, somebody wants to create something and let's say Pepsi wants to create their product in whatever, country X. Somebody in country X says, no, 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 we have to see the ingredients first. And they make Pipsi, P I P S I, tastes exactly the same. So intellectual property is a big issue as well. There's just so many issues that we look at here. Um, artistic works. We've even had problems in our web design class where someone took colored art from an artist and turned it all into black and white and sold it. As, and it, we had a lot of issues. 
So web pages and um, computer graphics, there's a lot of things that can be copied, modified slightly, and then called their own. But we, we can patent ideas. It's really hard to patent software. Um, so trademarks, logos, there's lots of things you can do to, to help make your, uh, identify your item as just yours. There's lots of rules and regulations, but you got to realize if you put something out there on the internet, somebody can take it. And it doesn't take much of a change. Like I've written a lot of songs and they're not all 100%, you know, from scratch. I literally, last night I was, I had one song in my mind that I know, but if I change the words, the music is pretty much the same, but I had a completely different song. So there's a lot of issues to look at here. It's probably nothing new to you, but there's a lot of issues. Okay. And then there's issues like cyber squatting, you know. Somebody could have bought Coca-Cola.com as soon as it came out and then sell it to Coca-Cola. Typo squatting. This is funny. Somebody could make Hitmail.com or Google.com or instead of Coke.com, maybe Coca instead of Coca-Cola. So there's lots of there's lots of tricks. URL hijacking. Somebody goes there and they might if there's a common typographical mistake on a common um, name like Craigslist, maybe it'll take you somewhere else that looks the same, but it's not. So now this is an issue too, just for our for our terminology. What is the digital divide? Basically, not everybody in the world has the same access to computers. And I put here, think of these. I, again, I lived in Nigeria for three years in my 29, 30, and 31 years. Um, and not everyone had access to computers, that's for sure. We didn't even have access to the internet at that time. But, you know, migrants, poor folks, just all sorts of people, older people, people living out in the country, maybe they don't have access to the internet. So there's lots of issues out here. And the speed of the internet is very different in many places too. So we cannot just assume that literally this class you're taking right now is not available for everybody. It's improving, but we're putting a lot more demands on it as well, like Zoom and things like that. So how is this changing the workplace of today? Well, one of the big, biggest ones, of course, we can buy from anywhere, which is good and bad. It's not so good for your local mall. It's good that you have access to everything. Uh, anyway, jobs are changing. We're covered. Get into this. Telecommuting. So like you could be right now telecommuting from home. And we don't know what you're wearing. We don't know what, how you're dressed. It doesn't really matter at all. But who can telecommute? I want you to think about this. What do you want in a career? So there's so many jobs that can do this and many jobs that cannot do this. But right now, teachers, students, computer programmers, web developers, accountants, journalists, Financial planners, real estate agents, many, 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 many people can simply work without a physical office. And there's lots of ways where people would share an office. Like we can have one classroom. Of course, many of us go, come and go. 20 real estate agents could share one small office to meet their clients or, you know, a couple offices. So there's the world is changing, as you know. Job de skilling, skilled labor is now being eliminated by high technology. So this is what I want you to think. Think about your career choice. Don't jump into an industry that's going to be taken over by high tech. Building or manufacturing. Motors are changing. There was a lot of computer networks in every office. A lot of that's on the cloud now. Real estate. I mean, do I really need an agent to show me a house? I can do Google Street view and see a lot of things. Automatic legal documents for simple legal uh, documents. Truck drivers <laughs> this is amazing. So a lot of things are, are changing. Telecommuting, some good things, there's a whole bunch of them, like reduced costs for office space. The company doesn't need to have as much space. That's huge. You can watch your kids. You can have people, regardless of where they're located, the city of San Diego, I believe when you press one, two to hit, speak Spanish, the people answering the phone are literally located across the board. So there's lots of good from telecommuting. You know, like an airline, the people saying, can I take your, can help you with the reservation? They don't have to be in one big office. 
One airline in Salt Lake City has a whole bunch of employees that work from home. It happen to be a lot of mothers. They don't seem to quit. And the airline doesn't need to provide office space. Amazing. Drawbacks. Well, there's a lot of negatives, as you probably know as well. And then there's telecommuters maybe look at different than people who work on site. So there's lots of good, there's lots of bad. Um, health issues, you know, some of us spend way too much time on the computer. You know, think about yourself. When's the last time you got out of your seat? <laughs> Seriously, when's the last time you got some exercise? When's the last time your eyes looked at something across the room or closed for a while? So there's a lot of health issues. Stress, vision, physical muscle muscle problems. So think about that. And as I deal with my own sons in their young 20s, is sleep is so important. Time away from the computer is so important. Please. Um, children. I mean, parents and kids spend too much time on their phones. I mean, I've seen, I've. it's crazy. You've all seen this. You go to a restaurant, three or four people, they're all on a smartphone, not even talking to each other. It's crazy. I'm the old guy, but I know that's wrong. Internet addiction, there's all kinds of this stuff. Think about how much time you spend on a game or shopping on Craigslist for something you don't really need. There's just so much of this going on in the world today. So you need to do a little bit of getting offline. You know, admit maybe you have a problem. You know, you know somebody who does. I know that you know somebody who does. <laughs> spend way too much time online. Okay, so what do you do? Sometimes turn off your devices. Change your schedule. Go for a walk. How about crazy is this? Selfie deaths when people are taking pictures. Literally taking a picture. Oh, look at me near this bear. I mean, I don't want to laugh, but it makes you want to cry and laugh at the same time. Oh, look, I'm leaning over the waterfall. People have died this way. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, green computing. Let's just be more thoughtful of the tools we build, how do we deal with the batteries we're done with, what happens when the screen goes bad. So green computing, there's lots of things you can read about these, using less energy, maybe you need a new computer, keep your old screen. Anyway, I can go on and on. We can cover this, you can read about it in the chapter. Um, so back to where we started, realize other people can see what you're putting on Facebook or Instagram. I would highly recommend being moderate. Spam, bad, bad, bad. And other countries like in the European Union have some pretty serious regulations about what can be stored for you. Think about what you want to keep private on email. And censorship is real all across the world, including here. Okay, that's all for now. I'm going to sign out and hopefully you enjoy Chapter 4.